Hi, Gratitude Seeker. Welcome to a new episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Today, with me, I have someone that is really interesting and has um, an interesting story because she is the kind of person that for which gratitude is so ingrained in, in her habits and in her beliefs that it's really hard to explain. So that will be uh, an interesting challenge for me and I'm really looking forward to that. Her name is Christy Linder. She is a management consultant, author, blogger, and podcast host focused on all things transformational. She has spent her entire 16 plus years of her career working for some top consulting firms in the world. I will give, give you a hint. They are part of the big four. Uh, she blogs about all things related to personal, professional, and organizational transformation. She uses gratitude in every single part of her life, and thanks to it, she has achieved most of her childhood dreams. Hi, Christy. So nice to have you here. Thank you for yeah. being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm really excited to speak with you today. Is there something that I missed or that you would like to add? No, no, you've covered it. I think I, I, it's, it's for me, it's always weird to hear someone talk about me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if other people are used to it yet, but it's, it's just interesting sometimes to hear it. All right. All right. So it will be a little bit of a challenge for me because um, people uh, usually know how, how they got to be in this situation to be so grateful and to to live with gratitude and uh it will be interesting to to find out how you do it, how you do it how you did it and um to to share with uh with our audience how they can do it uh, themselves as well so my first question is what does gratitude mean for you so you know for me gratitude is a way of being I, I don't know. I, I just, sometimes I, I pinch myself, especially where I am now. Um, I pinch myself in terms of how, how amazing, like everything that I, a lot of things that I've wanted in my life has really kind of come to, to be. And I, I really, I owe it to gratitude. I owe it to the fact that, you know, I think it may be because I came from very humble beginnings. Uh, and you know, from where I started to like where I am now is, is still, it's still, it's still, it's still like, wow, like I cannot believe, you know, this is my life, but it's something I've, I've always been so happy for. And I know like, you know, I talked about it being a way of being, um, one of the ways that I know I do it every morning. Um, the minute I wake up, I always say like a miracle will happen today. Mm -hmm. I start every single day and I say that. And guess what? A miracle always has, and it, it's, 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 it's not like big miracles, right? It can be the little things, you know, the little things like, you know, I catch that bus that I was going to, you know, I was running for, or, you know, I get the parking spot, like right, right out. So it's like these little things, but they add up, you know, every day, day in, day out. And then I see it and I'm like, wow, it did happen. And in living my life that way, that's just one example of many, but in living my life that way, you know, sometimes people say I'm too optimistic. <laughs> they think I'm, you know, too, you know, un unrealistically happy. Uh, but I feel like because of my background um, and because of where I am today, you know, my, I know I know what my ancestors went through. And they've given me, you know, because I'm here now, they've given me the opportunity to, 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 to do something impactful and to be living in this time in, in the history. I have to, I have a responsibility to my family and to myself to make the best of my life. And it's only in being, you know, thankful for where I, I've come and thankful for where I'm headed that I can do that. Totally, totally. Um, we've talked a little bit um, about your story before we began. And I'm really curious if you want to, to share uh, your story, like uh, where did you come from? What, what's your background? Uh, for our listeners to get a better perspective and um, to understand how you got to be so grateful and where where did you uh, come from? Sure, sure. Uh, so I am based in the U.S. 
And uh, I, you know, I mentioned to you before that my, my parents are immigrants. So I am first generation American. So I was born in the US. I live in Boston, uh, Massachusetts. And growing up, you know, I'm the oldest of eight. So my mom wow. remarried. Yeah, my mom re had remarried, and um, you know, so 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 there's like there's like eight of us. So I'm the oldest. Um, there's like you know six other boys and and a, and a girl, and then me. Um, my my sister is the young. My sister's the baby. So, kind of growing up in that environment, being you know being kind of from that um, that that you know kind of that background. There's a lot of things that people don't understand the dynamics of first generation immigrant children because. We live in two worlds, you know. I, I grew up speaking Creole and speaking French and speak, you know, and, and I spoke English, you know, also as well. So it was like in our house, like my mom would say, our house, this is not the US in the house, you know, outside is the US, but inside. So she really made sure um, she raised us with a certain type of like ethics and values that were core to her culture. Um, and so, for me, you know, kind of seeing that and then going to, to school and, and seeing like things in America, it was always fascinating to see the, the two sides. So fast forward, um, one thing I think that my mom really did was that was very helpful for me. Even if we didn't have a lot of, 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 of money, she always put me in different programs, like prep programs, development programs. So that, and, and she was like that too. She was always reading. She was a, you know, reading constantly like every time I if I remember her she was always like writing and reading and she was just a wow. very you know e and even if she didn't have that back you know she she really made what she can with her her life and so I picked up the same type of habits and I knew I wanted to by the time I was in college I knew I wanted to go into consulting I, I saw it at an internship and um I was so excited to 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 uh to be able to get into that space but it you know, when I when I finally started to get into consulting, um, what I learned really quickly is that a lot of the people that I work with, they came from a very different background. You know, they went to, you know, Ivy League schools. They came from very, you know, sometimes prominent wealthy families, well, you know, very connected. And there was just a there was just a gap, you know, like yeah. there was what I knew and then there was you know what they had and everything. And you know, for me, I felt like wow, like I I, I, I was always looking for people to help me. Like I said, well, you know, come, you know, someone to kind of help me. And I just never really found that in the beginning of my career. Um, and then I decided to, you know, I said, I'm thankful I've made it this far. I have to also continue to push. And so that's what led me on a journey to, you know, seeking mentorship, changing, you know, my, the course of my, my career journey and being able to, to pivot um, to now where I am today. So I know that's a long winded story, but <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, but it, I think it's important. And uh, I'm seeing something that's um, so it's your story. And I'm all, I'll, I was also thinking about, I don't know if you know about Gary Vaynerchuk. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's my he... faith. I love him. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he is also um a first generation American, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, actually, he wasn't born in, in, in the US, um, but he, he always says that he is so grateful and so grateful all of the time. And uh, what was very um, interesting for me to, uh, to hear him say was the fact that he says that he is so productive because he is grateful. And he appreciates the the gifts that he's he's been given. The fact that he's in the states and that he has had all the opportunities that he has had, that he's he's just grateful all the time, and he's very happy to be able to do all all the all of the things that he he is doing. And I find it interesting that it's similar to your story. Like you, you're a first generation American, and. Um, you appreciate it much more, most probably than um, than other people might that are, I don't know, third or fourth generation Americans, because they they might have get, gotten used to to the, to the American uh, way of life and everything. Right, right, yeah, no, it's when you you know when you see both sides, you know, when you when you grew up a certain way and then you like you know gain experiences. So like with my job. 
I purposefully wanted to go into consulting um, because I wanted to work with a lot of really smart people, but I also wanted to travel the world because mm -hmm. I didn't travel when I was a kid. You know, we didn't, I, I didn't travel a lot. So I wanted something, a job that will take me places and do things. And that's exactly what, what I did. When you start to open your eyes and see all these things, it's, it, it's pretty remarkable. And it, it, you wake up with a different purpose in the morning. You know, you don't just wake up and it's like, oh, is it going to be okay? You know, you wake up on fire, like, okay, what am I going to do to impact the world today? Like, I wake up like that because I know, you know, now, uh, Jordan, my, my mom is like, I'm, my mom has passed away. Like my grandmother, like a lot of the people, the elders of my family have, have since passed. Mm -hmm. So because I'm the oldest in my culture, I'm the oldest. I am the elder now. So could you imagine? I mean, I may, you know, some people may say, wow, you look young, but <laughs> I am the oldest. I'm the eldest. Wow. And when you have that type of responsibility, you know, I now have, you know, 15 nieces and nephews, you know, <laughs> in addition to my brothers, you know, my sister. And so when you have that weight of a responsibility and, and like, this is where, like, this is where you are. It's just, I have, I take it very seriously and I'm just so thankful. I'm very thankful. Yeah. Um, I'm really curious if you want to share with us uh, where, where you're from, actually. Like, where is your family, family your ancestors from? Yeah, they're from um, Haiti. I don't know if you've heard of Haiti. It's a yeah. Caribbean island. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah. that's not that far away from the States, right? No, it's, um, it's south. It's south. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. In, the, in, the, in the Caribbean. Yeah. And do... Do the people there have any um, habits, any things that are uh, related to, to gratitude? I'm really curious if, uh, if there is something in the culture that is related to gratitude. Absolutely. Um, you know, whenever I go to Haiti, I, I have never been around like, you know, people are just so thankful for everything like in our culture like um you know predominantly most people are catholic uh religion and so religion plays a big part of every you know of most people's lives but i mean you see people i have gratitude for the littlest things like i mean things you don't think about you know they they you know they're happy when they have you know in, in, in haiti they're happy when they have like basic amenities you know basic um you know like housing and f water clean water and food and access to like the internet like and it's things we in america you know i think sometimes sometimes people don't realize how much we take for granted some of the basic types of amenities that are out there um but when you when you see that you know and, and you, you know you get a chance to live that that does something too you know so like i've always you know i've born here but seeing the images, not only in Haiti, but going to other countries, you know, I've been to a lot of other countries and just seeing how they live and how happy they are without a lot. They don't need a lot of things like we all the stuff, you know, people need here in the US, they don't need any of that. And they're so happy and they live such a peaceful life. Um, it's pretty remarkable. So to me, those moments really ground me and they really, you know, make me remember, you know, what my responsibility is, but also like, you know, how to live in the moment and how to really make sure that I enjoy and experience life um, as, as I, as I've, as I've been experiencing it. So. That's amazing. That's amazing. I also have a, a personal curiosity. I've been to a, to a summer training with uh, the big four and um, I've talked with, with the trainers and uh, I asked them how, how is life as a consultant and, from what I, I heard from them, I, I told them to be really honest. <laughs> and they said that um, it's pretty busy. Like they do get to travel, which is really great, but it's also really tiring sometimes. And it's really, you're on the road all the time and you work a lot. How do you manage to work a lot of time and still be able to feel gratitude, to experience gratitude and to enjoy the, the journey? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, I know for me, I think it goes back to me doing the type of work that I love to do. So I knew, like I said, I always wanted to go in consulting. But for me, I was very specific about 
wanting to do an wanting to make an impact. I couldn't I couldn't just go into consulting just to say I'm a consultant. I wanted to do I wanted to be in an area and do work that I love that's meaningful to me. Uh, and that's why, you know, I, at first I dabbled with IT consulting because when I started my career, um, the dot com was like the big rage back then. This was 20 something yeah. years ago. Oh, well, not even 15 plus years ago, but um, early to early 2000s. But th that was the rage back then. So I, I jumped on that bandwagon to say, oh, OK, if I have IT background, you know, I'll be able to, you know, to, to do more with it. And then even though I was good at it, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't have passion, you know, yeah. I didn't have passion about it. And I said, well, how can I do it? Cause the work is demanding. Consulting is extremely demanding. Um, and so in my, like my guiding principle is like, if I'm going to be here, I better have fun. I, I better <laughs> feel like I'm making meaning because it's, this is a big part of my life, you know, and by nature, I've always been a workaholic. That's just yeah. always, since I was a kid, I've always been in that, like, you know, I had, I've already had, I've always had like a very strong work ethic, but I said, you know what? I, it has to be productive. I'm not just going to work just to work or just to make, like, it has to be. So that's why I do work in the strategy side, um, people related. So all the programs that I, I do is related to helping people's careers. It's related to helping organizations create a new a culture of diversity and inclusiveness. You know, it's related to helping um, leaders become better, you know, in, in exec. So, so all the things I do, I feel like every day I walk away and I do make an impact. I may make an impact on a team. I make an impact on an individual um, or a, a business unit for a client. And that for me, even if it's a lot of work, it's gratifying. It's very gratifying. Um, and I, I'm, like I said, it's, it's not just the work, hard work. It's, it's meaningful work. So to me, if, if it's not meaningful, it's not fun, I don't think I would be doing it. I'm, I'm kind of in that stage in my life that I, I, you know, I'm not just, I just, I'm not doing it for superficial reasons, you know, like I'm, yeah. I'm doing it because I really love what I do. Totally. I love it. I love it. I, I have the same principles and I also have another principle that uh, I'm fortunate enough to, to be able to uh, afford, let's say, um, mm -hmm. that I that I choose the people that I'm working with and I work with people that I, I feel that have the same value as I have and the, that I appreciate for their work. And this, is, this makes for, for a much more beautiful life and a much, much more beautiful work experience. Um, but I'm really curious also, are you uh, in your work, like uh, with teams, with uh, culture, are you integrating gratitude in, in that in any way? Yes. Um, another great question. So I actually do with my team. So we always start off, like even with my meetings, to start off with uh, an affirmation or start off in terms of like, well, you know, someone share like something that they've done, that they were happy that they're doing or something that, you know, with the weekend coming up. What are you thankful that for that you're 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 going to do this weekend? Um, so I try to weave that in very subtle. I don't mm -hmm. make a big deal out of it per se, um, but that's kind of ways I do it. Like I said, um, I'm a big affirmations person. So anyone who knows me, I always have a quote, and and I get this from <laughs> my mother. My mother, she always had a quote for everything, and I'm the same way. Um, and so. A lot of my quotes, you know, are about motivation and inspiration and, and, and really, you know, bringing kind of that, that element to it. So absolutely. Like, like I said, I, it's such a gratitude is such a, a way of being, I don't even think about it. Like, you know, I don't think about it as like, Oh, gra oh I'm doing gratitude. Like it's just part of my life mm -hmm. and it's always been part of my life. So that's amazing. That's amazing. So, um, you mentioned that, uh, you're a big quote person what is your favorite quote on gratitude so i'm trying to think what's my favorite quote on gratitude there are too many right <laughs> there i mean there's just there are there are so many i'm trying to think there's just i'm trying to think of like what's my latest one hmm i i'm like i can't think i'm like drawing a blink right now on like what is a, a current quote i'll have to come back to you on that one i'll have to think about it because right, I'm no like, I'm, I'm running through my quotes in my head and I'm like, I can't think of one specific at the second. 
But yeah, no problem, no problem. I'm sure that one will come. Um, yes. But I'm sure that like any of us, you have your bad days as well. And you have times when it's hard to be grateful when things don't seem to be going on the right track. What do you do to get back on track, to, be, to get back on being grateful? So, because I always have a lot of projects cooking. So in addition to me, I have, a, like I said, a, a demanding job, but I always have like different projects that I'm like, like doing. And so one of the ways that I, I, I channel disappointment or I channel anger or frustration, I pick up whatever project I'm doing and I, I put that energy instead of like being mad or being upset or disappointed, I put all of that energy into something that I'm working on. And so, so redirecting my energy into a productive piece has been really life-changing. I started to do that. Um, I actually picked that up from, um, you, if you know Gary Vee, you know Tony Robbins, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm a student of both these men because, again, Tony is, again, he's another person that, like, lives with gratitude. And he, he, he is part of his, his philosophy of life. Um, and so I remember I went to one of his events and he mentioned, you know, sometimes you just have to take the energy and, and remember you have the power in a split second to change it. You know, you have, a, you have the power to change your state, you know, change your state of mind, state of being. And I remember when I learned that, that technique has worked miracles because now I don't, that doesn't mean I don't get upset. I still get upset. I still, things happen because I'm human. You know, things will happen and sometimes you're just not happy with what's going on. But I've said, you know what, within, if, if, if I'm upset for more than like 30 minutes, more than an hour, I say, okay, I got to change my state. What do I need to do? And I, I figure out like in an instant, I'm going to do this. So that may be, you know, me working on a project that may be, you know, me like going for a walk or, or whatever it is to change. So I don't stay in that space because I think staying in that space can be a little dangerous because what happens is that when people are upset, what happens? They get more upset and then they yeah. get more upset and then mm -hmm. it just keeps snowballing. Right. And so I think, I think it's important to like recognize when it's happening, but have mechanisms, have ways, you know, for me, like, you know, um, you know, with Tony, he, he taught me, you know, how to trigger to change my state in an instant because we have that power, no matter what someone may have done to us or whatever, we have the power to change. Like, like where we are, we have the power to, to, to change. Um, you know, we may not, you know, people can do and say whatever, but we have the power to, of ourselves. So might as well take advantage of that. And, and that's been very helpful. That's been a game changer, like I said, for me. I, I totally agree. I know that he, he said something about um, posture, uh, physiology. Uh, I think there are three things that, that we can do to change our state immediately. Mm -hmm. If we if we have our shoulders uh, down and uh, we might look down, uh, our head is uh, looking down. Um, all we need to do in this moment, and um, while you're listening, if you feel that your shoulders are down or or something like this, just take them back, raise raise yeah. your head up, or actually look at the sky or do something like this, and. Fun, the funny thing is that it actually works and it actually changes your state. Because if I, if I tell you to imagine a person that's sad, you will most probably think of someone that's, uh, that has the shoulders down and right. uh, that uh, is looking down as well. But when you, when you think about someone who is confident, you, you see them in the posture that I just uh, mentioned. So um that can be really helpful for for our listeners you can do right now when when you're listening good so um do you feel that you've been grateful all of your life like uh do you feel that you had one moment when you actually got gratitude that you actually got to live it more mm-hmm I would say, you know, in the beginning, I was working so hard. You know, I, I was putting myself to school. I was working full time, in college full time. You know, I was, I was just, I was just so focused on, 
on like trying to get through school, I, I wasn't thinking about gratitude. Like I must admit, I wasn't thinking about that. I think when I, when I started, when, when, when gratitude started to, to become a daily part of my life, because in, cause I, like in before, I remember I would just do things because I was in such a rush. You know, you're young. <laughs> you're in such exactly. a rush. for I don't know where you're running to, but you're in such a rush to do things. Um, so I remember, okay, I was like, I, I finished the school. Okay, check. I finished this. Okay, check. And, and I was living my life like that. And I think the moment that gratitude, I, I realized how, how big, like what I had accomplished. Cause even graduating college, I didn't think of it as a big thing. Cause I was like, okay, I've done that. That means now I got to go get my master's degree. That exactly. means now I got to go get a job. That means, you know what I mean? Like, so to me, it was just check, check, check. And then when I turned, um, when I was uh, 22, years old. I was about the age of 22 at the time. Um, by that time, my, I had just graduated. I had graduated undergrad a year before. Um, and my, I told you I was started my career in IT consulting. My, the firm I worked for, they relocated me to Atlanta, Georgia, um, which is another, like the Southwestern, the South, uh, Southern part of the U S mm -hmm. and I like probably, you know, once I got there, that was what 2001. And then, so once I got there, um, about like, Eight months later, I bought my first house. Wow. <laughs> and, 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 and so it was, it was funny. I didn't, I didn't go down there to buy a house. I just was traveling so much. And I was in an apartment that I was never in. And, and down there, the prices are reasonable, more reasonable mm -hmm. than real estate, like in, in where I am in Boston. And I just, I just kind of did the math. And I said, well, if I'm traveling so much, I might as well buy something instead of like wasting my money in rent you know, yeah. um, cause I can afford it. You know, I had enough of a salary that I can afford it. And again, it was just check. Okay, well, let me look for a house and let me do this. And I think when I was moving the day that I closed on the house, I just graduated from college. I just bought like my, a, a new car. I, I had a job that I was traveling. And I remember the day the, when I was driving to my house, something hit me. Something said, Christy, do you believe what you just did? Like, do you take a moment? Like I took a moment to sink it in and I got so emotional because I was like, oh my gosh, like I did this. Like, I'm so thankful that I've come this far in such a short amount of time, you know, from, from finishing college to like, you know, less than a year later, you know, like I remember when I told people I bought a house, they're like, what? <laughs> you know, it was like unheard of at my age to buy a house, given my background, you know? Um, so when that happened, that's when I said, this is amazing. This is amazing. And I'm going to continue like, and, and then, and then that's when I started to incorporate like a lot of the gratitude because I realized like, I, I just, I just felt like I'm incredibly blessed. And I, I don't think I've ever felt gratitude to that degree until that moment. It wasn't even at the closing. It was like when I was moving, <laughs> you know? Um, and it was, and ever since then, like it's just been part of, it. and I feel like that's actually accelerated. My progress has accelerated my accomplishments um, ever since then, so. That's amazing, that's amazing. And uh, yeah, it points to something really interesting that we, in spite of what's going on on the outside, the fact right. that we have the experience of gratitude on the inside that makes a difference and that gets us to appreciate the the experiences that we have so much more and it's such a big difference it, and, and, yeah, and kind of to that one one thing i was going to add to the story what also you just made me remember because i forgot why that was such an important moment yes it was a big it was big to be buying a house that young but one of the bigger reasons was because when I told, I remember when I was first moving to Atlanta and I told some of the people that I knew at the time I went to high school with, they, you know, they told me, they told me, oh, you'll be back. You're never going to be, you're not going to be successful. Oh you know, God. you know that. So that was, that was, you know, these were like friends, you know, they just, they were like not happy for me that I was moving. So the fact that they, you know, they're like, oh, you'll be back. Oh, you're not going to, you know, consulting is hard. Like, I don't know, you know. We, you don't do that type of work. Like, you know, you're a woman, you're a black woman, you know, like it was just like, I'm, I'm just, you know, to them, it was like, you're living a dream, but like, give it up. <laughs> you're not going to succeed. 
Um, and then to see these things continue to happen, despite what people said, I think after a while I shut everybody up, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the beginning, you know, you know, again, because of my background, people didn't think I had it in me to accomplish what I did, you know, and they didn't, you know, I don't, I don't think they, you know, I don't know if they, you know, they doubted my abilities, but they just, they didn't think I had it in me. So. Yeah, usually when people say that you can't do something, it means that they can't do something and it's much easier for them to say, oh, you can't do that. You're, you're like me. How could you do this? It's, right. there, there is this story that uh, a business coach here from Romania said um, he, he had a talk with his father and um, he told his father then that within a year or so, he will uh, earn in a, in a day how much he's earning uh, in a month or something like this and uh, his father uh, said something like uh, really boy you're i made you how can you do that <laughs> right right and uh, um, people wanting to be helpful <laughs> or wanting to uh, for us not to not to be hurt or for them to not to be hurt <laughs> fortunately and they tell us things like these and it's actually their yeah. limitations and uh, the fact that you went on and you were able to actually make make things happen is is amazing and congrats for that but Thank you. um you mentioned the part of your life when you when you were younger and you were uh going uh, from an, one thing to another if you could go back in time what would you tell that younger self yeah. about gratitude? Man, um, so that that younger self, I, I would say that, you know, sometimes you have to slow down, you know, um, you have to slow down and you have to not just, you know, doing things to, to check a box, but thinking about the impact of it and taking a moment to reflect on like what this means. You know, I, I didn't do that. You know, like I said, I, I was just, I, I, I don't know. I was like, so this is one thing about me, Georgian. I, I sometimes get obsessed. <laughs> I, that's the best <laughs> word I can use. But when I'm laser focused and I want something, I, I, I'm like this, you know, and, yeah. and I work and I will work my heart out. You know, I'm going to like, stay up all night and do all this stuff and that's and that's why maybe i was i was by design made for consulting right but i i've always i've always had a very like i said a strong work ethic but i think i didn't take time to appreciate the you know the, the accomplishments that i did um as much as i should have mm -hmm. um and i i would tell my younger self to just kind of slow down take time to 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 get to know and and build relationships with people um, I know for me, like I said, I was so focused on checking boxes and stuff. There were, there were people that were probably in hindsight trying to help me or trying to be my mentor, you know, and especially in college that I may have not seen because I was just so focused on my goals, you know, and maybe they, they could have helped me, you know, when I told you I got to work and I didn't have mentors, maybe they could have helped me find them, you know, if I had built relationships with them, you know, they could have said, Hey, okay, I know somebody in this space and you know, and so in hindsight, I feel like I would have told myself to really kind of slow down and get to know people and, 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 and take time and, and just have fun. I was, I was very serious, <laughs> so yeah. very serious, very focused, you know, very like this. Um, mm -hmm. I think you can do that, but you can incorporate everything else as well, you yeah, know, to make good. more balance. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been there and I, I can totally relate. Um, but right now, or until you got to, to, to be this grateful, uh, did you do uh, some kind of practice uh, consistently to help you to stay in this state of gratitude? Um, I mean, like I said, I, I, like I, said, I wake up and I, I, I have my, you know, my quote, like a miracle will happen today. I think it's just, I think it's just honestly, on the plane, I reflect. So I travel a lot because of the type of work that I do. So I always take a moment to just pause. I think just pausing and, and really thinking about 
what's happened, what hasn't happened, where are you, getting like a pulse check of where you are, even that is important because mm -hmm. sometimes you think about things differently. Um, I know I started to do that. Like when I go to the gym, I would think about stuff and, you know, um, I feel like being thankful, I, it goes back to that Tony Robbins thing. When you're thankful, you, you're, you're in a different state of mind at times and when you focus on how thankful you are um things i think i think sometimes answers to problems show up um, yeah. i think um you kind of open up a world of different thought and different possibility in mm -hmm. just being thankful um now i guess because i'm so used to that kind of the gratitude piece i can get into the space of like meditation and gratitude really quick so I have yeah. like, there's this song um, that I have like, that's on YouTube uh, that I downloaded uh, that I use. It's like a, it's like a meditation, like a ohm, like a ohm song. Mm -hmm. So whenever I need to get into that space, like I purposefully need to get there, even if it's for two minutes, it's for one minute, that helps me. That helps me recenter um, a lot. So, so besides that, um, like I said, saying the, you know, the, the miracle will happen, um, I'm really big about visualization as yeah. well. And so I have vision boards all over the place. I always have vision boards. And it's nice to see when vision boards, pictures come true, because they have. Um, and I didn't even know that's what they were called before. I used to do that as a kid. Wow. And yeah, so it's funny. I told you I've accomplished many things. Like um, I remember I had a, a picture of a BMW when I was a kid. And again, I when I was a kid, I didn't have any of that. And I said, you know what? I want that car. And I put it <laughs> and I looked at it every day. I didn't know it was called a vision board, you know, but that's what I called it. And then, you know, a year later after I bought my house, a year later, I bought my dream car. That same car, I bought it. Um, so, wow. you know, when you, when those things happen, you have to, you have to be thankful. You have to, like, there's just, there's no other, I don't know. There's, and, and again, from my background, you, I have to, like, it's the only way to live. Um, and I feel like the energy that I give off and the passion that I have, it comes from gratitude because people always say, Christy, you're so passionate. You're such a passionate person. Um, and I think it's honestly because it's like, I, I have to be like, I, I have to be because I, I just have so much gratitude in my life. So. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, what I wanted to point out, uh, for our listeners is, um, the habit that you have with, uh, with the miracle affirmation and i think that what you're doing great with with uh, that part is um the fact that you really believe it and you don't you don't expect for for big things to happen all the time but you have by by having the gratitude you can uh see the miracles in, in the little things and i think it's a really great way of of living life and of of doing gratitude because um, when we think about miracles, we think about usually things that are that seem impossible. But sometimes when we are sad, it might seem impossible for us to to smile or to be happy, and that can be a miracle. It's a simple one, but it can be a miracle. And I love the fact that you mentioned uh, this part, and I think that it can be very useful for our listeners. And I wanted to to bring that out and to. Um, to get it more clear for for our listeners to to actually implement in their life but uh getting back to uh what you said about relationships about the fact that uh they are so important in our life um do you have some people in your life that you would like to mention that you are really grateful for that helped you along the way or that uh just made an impact yeah how much time you have no. <laughs> <laughs> just point um i mean obviously you know my 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 family my my mom um you know may she rest in peace like I've, like the you know i've seen the sacrifices that my family has done um for me um very happy thankful um i have an amazing husband um so i got married two years ago and congratulations i, I just i'm just i'm just very very happy um with, with my marriage um, I have actually my, I have a stepson. I have a, a 13 year old a stepson. Um, and he actually keeps me young. He, he kind of, he kind of keeps me hip to certain things. <laughs> um, and he's such a caring young man. I'm very smart. And so I'm very thankful for him. 
Um, thankful for my, 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 like I said, my, my, my family, but my siblings, my sister, she's my biggest cheerleader. Um, I have some friends. I mean, I just have some friends, like some people. And I've, and I, I think I've done that purposefully. I think when you live with gratitude, you know, at the state that I do, I remember when I started to really live it. Remember I told you about the, the house thing. Yeah. When I started to really live gratitude, I noticed that certain people started to just disappear out of my life. And I didn't know why. And then, you know, I used to get upset, like, oh, they don't want to speak. And I said, you know what? I realized I'm on a different journey. My life is, I'm on a different path. And that means that not everyone is going to come with you on yeah. that path. And so that's something I would tell the listeners. Don't be afraid. You know, if you start to create a life of gratitude, not everyone is in that space and that's okay. You know, like you want to definitely, cause, you, cause you're going to attract the people that, that fit that life of gratitude. You're going to attract them in your life. You're going to attract certain experiences. You're going to attract certain resources, certain things. And so don't be afraid to let go of the past. Um, you know, if I think about the people that were doubting me when I said that I want, I was going to move and I was going to, I had all these big dreams and they doubted me and they laughed, I would have still been there. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have been able to accomplish what I did. So sometimes I think people are scared to get out of a comfort zone. Um, but they, they, they are surrounded by people that are very negative. So, you know, something to consider is when you live with gratitude, the universe does the work. You don't have to work. People will just stop showing up in your life that don't need to be there so and, and let fun. and let it be let it be you know that's the biggest thing let, let accept it for what it is this is wonderful advice and i love that you you pointed that out and um i think this is this is really brilliant that uh some people might go out go um might not be anymore in in your life and other people hopefully uh, more positive more grateful as you are uh, might appear and things might might shift really fast and uh, yeah this is one of the reasons why why I'm I'm working on and putting together a a gratitude group um for for my listeners to to have those kind of kind of people that are um grateful that are positive that sustain this this feeling and uh, have the same values and i think that's that's really powerful and i'm I'm really glad that you mentioned it so uh, we are nearing the end of our time together um where can our audience find you where can our audience see your work yeah um well they can definitely find me on on linkedin um or twitter you can go to Christy Lindor uh, and just feel free to reach out, reach out about anything. Like I said, I'm, a, I'm big on mentoring. Um, in my life, I've, I've reinvented my brand. You know, I've always been a consultant, but I've always I've reinvented my brand. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm about to publish my book. I'm right in the middle of that. So, you know, talk about that. I can talk about family, you know, um, being the eldest, being first generation. I mean, I could talk to anybody about anything. So, you know, feel free to reach out. Again, it's Christy Lindor. Um, you can, if you go to my blog, christylindor.com, if you want more information about my podcast or my book, you can go to mecemuse.com. And that's M-E-C-E Muse, M-U-S-E. Perfect. Thank you so much for being here with us and sharing your story. It was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.